Mutual won't raise their rates because of their first accident. Liberty Mutual Insurance. Liberty, 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 Liberty. As world leaders prepare to meet, Tucker Carlson is live in Japan with out. exclusive coverage of the G20 Summit. Um, starting tonight, we're having on Fox. taco soup uh, and taquitos for dinner. Are you tired and of I just got a, a Sprite. Now you have a choice. Both glasses and I've been watching the news. Silverfish or mice inside your eyes for a year. Bug blasters today to schedule your appointment. You ready? Hi, Fred. Not really much going on. Just did some laundry. It'll be ready in 45 minutes. So it'll be 2 o'clock. Before this video is done. Boxers alert Team USA has defeated Spain to advance in the Women's World Cup. The final score, two goals to one. So I've decided to get uh, a freaky job and give them half the proceeds. And uh, minus gasoline. Pretty much going to be better than nothing. And then I'll have a, like a, I'll drive and buy the food and then he can, you know, lift to the heavy bags and things like that, you know, or help. Like, you know, with the heavy lifting. So I can't really lift anything heavy. So.
effort to recruit more minority officers to the police department and the effort to introduce body cameras have not succeeded. And I accept responsibility for that. Do your asthma symptoms ever hold you back? About 50% of people with severe asthma have too many cells called eosinophils in their lungs. Eosinophils are a key cause of severe asthma. Facenra is designed to target and remove these cells. Facenra is an add-on injection for people to up with driven by eosinophils. Facenra is not a rescue medicine or for other eosinophilic conditions. Facenra is proven to help prevent severe asthma attacks, improve breathing, and can lower oral steroid use. Facenra may cause allergic reactions. Get help right away if you have swelling of your face, mouth, and tongue or trouble breathing. Don't stop your asthma treatments unless your doctor tells you to. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection or your asthma worsens. Headache and sore throat may occur. Haven't you missed enough? Ask an asthma specialist about Facenra. If you can't afford your medication, AstraZeneca may be able to help. Fact is, every insurance company hopes you drive safely. But Allstate helps you with DriveWise. A feedback that helps you drive safer, and that could lower your cost. Now that you know the truth, are you in good hands? I cleaned out my closet. We're doing laundry right now. I need to do the dishes and take the trash out. Also, store, furniture. That's the room. So I told him I'm busy making a video, and he's not listening. Let's begin. 
Chris Starwell, Fox News politics editor and co-host of the podcast that we host together. I'll tell you what, Chris, let's, can we start with Mayor Pete um, and what it's like to have a job as a mayor and to be running against 20 other candidates who don't really have a job where they're necessarily running something in charge of something. You have a couple of former governors, and Governor Steve Bullock is still in office, but as a mayor, you got that's you got to be there. It's hands on. Right, and as the uh, people who are serious about their jobs, the senators who are among the five or six or ten or twenty uh, members of the Democratic uh, Senate uh, caucus who are running for president, if you want to do your job well, it will be in conflict with your narrow political interests on a day to day basis. Buttigieg has had sort of the advantage here because I'm South sorry. Bend, what's South Bend? No name. Uh, is he the guy from Parks and Recreation? Is he uh, the male Leslie No? Or is this just nice little city out in Indiana and he's the mayor of it and it's fine? Well, the reality is that South Bend is a big town. Uh, it's a rust belt town uh, on the far periphery of Chicago that has a history. And the reality for Buttigieg is that he has not been tending to it knitting at home. He has been out running for president 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, there is upset there, and the fact that he could not control that meeting and that he himself became emotional. I don't want to say he's disqualifying for his chances, but he did not look in any way presidential in that moment. Well, um, we'll see more of it. Uh, I'm sure that will come up in the debate, and he'll, I'm sure he'll try to figure out a way to use it to his advantage. There were some people in the meeting who said they appreciated him being there and, and listening to everyone, so we'll see how that goes. But let's talk about the weekend. Um, all the Democrats, or most all of them, were in South Carolina for the big get-together there. Um, Kamala Harris, well, she was basically talking about turning the page on somebody named Joe Biden. Watch. We need somebody on our stage when it comes time to that general election who knows how to recognize a rap sheet when they see it and prosecute the case. And let's not turn back the clock. Let's start the next chapter, shall we? Let's start the next chapter. Let's turn the page. Turning the page, basically saying Obama, Biden era, that is over. Time for some new uh, energy. How did she do there? Well, the key thing, and I'm going to take a cue from her in my entire life from now on, which is I will only travel with a drum line in front of me. Everywhere, every room I go into, every meeting, I will go with a drum okay, line. We'll see if that we can really works. That. <laughs> see what you can do. See if there's a budget. Um, look, Kamala Harris is making an argument that African American vote. Uh, South Carolina is the first state, it's the only early state that has a majority African-American electorate. Black voters so far really seem, especially older black voters, really seem to favor Joe Biden. But she's making an, art, an implicit argument here, and it's not about Obama. What she's saying is Barack Obama needed to select a moderate old white dude right. from a Rust Belt state in order to get over. That was what was necessary for him. And she's saying it's not necessary anymore. We don't have to do it anymore. We can just go ahead and beat ourselves. It's an argument that a lot of those voters will read skeptically, but it's one that will sound it's very appealing to them on a very basic level. And in the lead-up to the debates, Bernie Sanders is announcing another new policy, another for all, uh, this time not, on Medicare. Not. Take a listen to him. It is a little bit crazy for people to do what they have to do, which is to get a quality education and then find themselves in the absurd position of having to pay that debt off for decades. And some of those people, they can't afford to get married, they can't afford to have kids, they can't afford to buy their own home. Well, we are going to change that. So that's in the lead-up to the debate where he will um, be not on the same night as Elizabeth Warren. She has a similar plan, but it's not for all. Well, not only, I mean, he, Bernie San by the time Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren are done, they will be promising each and every American a new Buick LaCrosse in their parking lot. Every every American. And you get a car, a and you get a car. You get a car, and you get a car, and you get a car. They're in this a lunatic dirt. It's just, it, this is why Democrat Democratic leaders are rightly afraid about what's going on. Because if Sanders, who is now promising to forgive the student loans of everybody, basically, uh, a trillion dollars, and yeah. another trillion dollars. So if, if either Sanders or Warren get the nomination, there's a reality that Democrats won't just miss out on taking the White House back, but they could be cleaned out in the Senate. They could lose their House majority. This stuff is way outside the mainstream, and that's what Democrats are afraid of. Okay, one other topic. You know, sometimes uh, people like to write an op-ed, especially on Mondays. Is it a prominent paper like the Wall Street Journal? It really it's sets, sets the cat's in the pigeons. This is from Democrats for Trump saying that um, he's 
voted for a Trump hailing ticket in 2020. He writes, it's too late for Mr. Trump to revamp his political personality, but with the 2016 election in the past, Nikki Haley on the ticket could tamp down the impunity for Mr. Trump that seems to have so many moderate and Republican-leaning women. President Trump needs the prospect of a Vice President Haley to help recapture the White House, and this weekend, Chuck Todd on the president asked the president if Trump and Pence would be There's not much to do in here because it's so small, which I like. Other than not being able to like mow the lawn or fish things that are not fun. I'm going to switch from mac and cheese to oatmeal. Oh, no.
dismisses as millennial seals is Corey Scott, the very man who says that he is the one who killed the ISIS fighter, not Gallagher. So the jury, Dana, is entitled to ask, well, which part of his testimony is real? The part where he says he saw Gallagher stab the fighter or the part where he says he's the one who actually killed him? Can those two statements coexist? So given that doubt, there is a, a lot of weight being put on the forensic evidence that we're going to get over the next couple of days. And then, as I say, the prosecution could rest as soon as tomorrow. Then we have to see whether the defense even decides to call any witnesses or indeed go straight to closing statements. Dana? All right, Jonathan Hunt, thank you. And for more on this case, let's talk to John Yu. He's a former deputy assistant attorney general in the Bush administration. He's now a professor of law at University of California, Berkeley. So... Usually courtroom drama, you see it more on television than you do in an actual courtroom. This last week was a total shock. Tell me what you think about what's going on here. And note that Corey Stewart, the person who was testifying, who said, I, no, I actually killed the ISIS fighter, he had been given immunity to testify. Well, Dana, I think you're uh, pointing out a really interesting fact about this trial. Usually when a prosecution goes into a case, they would like to know everything 
every witness they're going to call is going to say, what every piece of evidence they're going to put before a jury is going to show, and they were clearly shocked. Uh, this uh, this uh, medic who was asked to testify was supposed to testify that he saw Chief Petty Officer Gallagher kill the ISIS prisoner, but in fact he admitted he had done it himself. Uh, it's hard to see actually why the prosecution is still going forward with the case when their star witness actually admitted to the murder. Well, he's, um, and of course uh, says that he saw uh, Gallagher stab the fighter. Gallagher says that was because he was trying to give him uh, medical care, and now this one says that he is um, the one that killed him. What happens in a in a situation like this? Because this is a military trial, right? Yeah, and what's really hard, there are two things that are distinctive about military trials versus the kinds we see on TV or civilian trials. One is that you have a jury of experts. You have people on the jury who served in war zones, who know what it's like to fight. Second, they have to look back and say, look, we're not second-guessing. We're not trying to say, back now in our air-conditioned courtroom, we can impose our standards now. You have to go back and put yourself in the position and all the pressures and all the circumstances of combat and all the things that we ask men and women to do under pressure and say, did they do the right thing under those circumstances? That's interesting that's much, because much that much is more, it, that's interesting to me because then it is more of a jury of your peers. Yes, there's a famous defense attorney who said, if I had a guilty client, I love to be in civilian juries. But if I have an innocent client, I would rather try them in a court martial because a jury will find the truth. Take a listen to what um, Gallagher's attorney, Timothy uh, Parlatori said uh, this morning on Fox and Friends. They're presenting evidence that a school-age girl was walking along, clutched her stomach. There's no evidence of it whatsoever. The people that are trying to blame him are just disgruntled members of his platoon who yep. weren't even in the same building as him. Uh, I know that you know a lot about national security law, John. Uh, how unusual is this within um, a military branch to have an accusation like this? This is an unfortunate story because what you are seeing is a breakdown in unit discipline here and one of our most elite units is, of course, the SEAL teams. Uh, you see, even if Petty Chief Gallagher is innocent and did do this, you do have examples of people who are in sniping positions, shooting and civilians, it's just you can't tell who. You have people uh, accusing each other of committing war crimes. This is a breakdown of discipline. Unfortunately, I think it's because of the irregular combat and the enormous pressures we put people on to fight ISIS on the battlefield. As Jonathan Hunt was saying, that the defense now has the opportunity to call a witness, do you think that they will do that, or they might just rest? I think a lot of it has to do with the forensic evidence we're going to hear this week. So far, all the evidence the prosecution put on has only been eyewitness testimony, which is always very shaky because it relies on memory. Uh, based on the fact that the star prosecution witness just totally contradicted their theory of the case, I could see the defense just resting and not calling any witnesses. Uh, I've watched enough TV courtroom dramas to know that that's a possibility. And certainly in this case, uh, it would make sense. John, you, we appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks, Dana. Here's a new book by the best-selling author, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Bleep. We'll speak with Mark Manson about his new book on hope. Yes, hope. Next. Do you know which investment could hit record highs this year? It's what central banks have been buying at the rate not seen for 50 years. What investment is it? Gold. It's trending higher, and central banks could help send gold back to record highs. I've been investing in gold since 1972, and I've been a winner, no matter what happened to the economy. Call Lear Capital to get this exclusive report, sky-high gold, and candid conversations from the experts. I believe fervently, and no one pays me to say this, that 2019, you are going to pray Thank God that you own precious metals. Get your free report and video. Discover why central banks are making huge gold buys and why experts say gold is headed toward record highs. Lear Capital is the highest rated gold IRA dealer with 70,000 satisfied customers and over 900 consumer affairs reviews. Get the free report and video and ask how you can get up to $2,000 in gold free. Call 1-800-914-3030. Dad, this is a lot of work. It, it might take us the entire weekend. You think this is rough? Try building one of the most massive wooden ships in history without modern tools.
we have tens of thousands of cars ready to be delivered to your doorstep. And it's why hundreds of thousands of happy customers have ditched the dealership and bought their car online, earning us an average 4.7 stars in the process. So if you didn't know about us before, you do now. We're Carvana, and we want to give you the car buying experience you deserve. What does help with the heart failure look like? It looks like Jim heading off on an adventure. Jill has entrusted heart failure medicine that helps her heart to hospital. It helps improve your heart's ability to pump blood to the body. Don't take it, trust her. <laughs> I want to do my first check is Black Panther, you know.
more possibilities is always better. And I think we're hitting a point in our society where our brains can't handle all the options. We can't handle all the potential. And so we need to start learning how to limit ourselves, choose our boundaries, choose what we're willing to accept into our lives and what we're not. Okay, so tell me then about life hack. You're know, talking about hacks. You're yeah. talking about people, like, and I'm, I'm sort of guilty of that. Like, I always feel like I'm not doing enough. I'm not reading enough. I'm sure. Let's see if there's a movie on. Uh, I'm selling jewelry boxes. That one's pretty. I like the aqua one. Forty four ninety five. We got a movie, I don't know what it is. <clears throat> the other day I watched part of a movie with Tom Cruise in it. It's a pretty good movie. I like action films. Oh, this is that war movie. Not really into war movies.
everything go in the jar? Uh, yeah. All right, I'll put it in there. All right, thanks. Okay. Can I do another look? Okay. You wouldn't have probably, probably no time. No, it said self clean. I have to clean it because the light come came on self clean. Oh. So when this gets done, okay. you can. Okay. Right. Okay. Maybe I'll finish uh, tomorrow then. Well, you can finish when it gets through. Okay. I'm afraid not to wash it when it comes on and says self clean. That's true, yeah. Because I don't, I don't want it to. And it might not do nothing, but anyway. <laughs> but when it gets done, I'll come tell you. Right. Is that okay? That's fine. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Rachel. You're welcome. So that'll be two, three o'clock. We done about five. I guess I'll watch the movie. 